Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. If you are new to the channel, I would love to welcome you. Highly suggest you go down below, hit that subscribe button, tick that little bell, and while you're down there, smash that thumbs up button. It really helps us out, lets us know we're doing a good job, and you don't want to miss any future videos just like this one. So this is going to be our second episode in our VFR Basics tutorial series with the Cessna 172 G1000 mod. So if you missed our last episode, links will be down in the description. Go ahead and check that out. There's a lot of good information there to get you started. In this episode, we're going to be talking more about the G1000 because moving on from here on out, we really have to get a better understanding on how to use the G1000 and interface with it. So, if you want to know more about the G1000, stay tuned right here on 2020 Flight Simmers. All right, everyone, so we are in the beautiful cockpit of the Cessna 172 with the G1000 suite. This is the G1000 NXI edition. Seems to be working very well right now, and if you haven't done so already, there is a new download in your marketplace. So if you haven't checked that out yet, today is September 3rd, I would go ahead and check that out. All right, so... To get started here, we're going to go over the G1000 from left to right, and we're going to go over pretty much every aspect of it so you can better navigate around the G1000 suite. First part of this that we're going to be taking a look at is the PFD, which is right in front of the pilot, and we're going to go over all the different buttons on the G1000. So let's start from the left and work our way over to the right. Over here on the top, this is your volume button. So if you are checking your VORs to make sure you have the correct frequency in and you want the Morse code, you need to make sure that you're turning your volume up. The second knob down is for your nav frequency tuning. The inner knob will tune your smaller numbers and the outer knob will tune your larger numbers. To know which frequency is in use, uh, whichever frequency is on the right side of the box is the active frequency. The frequency that you can actually change is your standby frequency. To switch that frequency, all you need to do is go right here and tap that frequency button and ba-bam! It went ahead and put that right over and it just so happened to be a frequency for something and as you see what populated right next to it tells you uh, what frequency that's for. To move to your second nav frequency, how you want to do that is go ahead and tap on the inner knob of your frequency scroll and that will go ahead and move it down to your second frequency in which you can go ahead and program that to whatever you would like and before you do anything go ahead and swap the frequency over so the next knob down is going to be our heading bug and the heading bug is going to be displayed right here in our heading view window and you will also see the bug moving around your compass rows now if you are on course and you want to do a quick adjustment and you want to switch over to your heading from your nav and you just want to zero out your heading, all you need to do is give a quick tap here on the center of the heading knob and it will go ahead and recenter the heading on the course in which you're on. So we're going to go ahead and talk about some of these buttons down here on the left hand side. The very top one is your autopilot master button. That is what's going to turn the autopilot on and off. And if we turn it on, you can see a bunch of stuff happen right up here, and it shows us our autopilot is now on. The second button here is the heading hold button. So once your autopilot is engaged, it is only going to engage basic roll and pitch. So it's going to keep the airplane leveled out, but it's not going to follow any heading or GPS course. You have to tell the autopilot to do that, and to do that, you will go ahead here and tap on this heading button. When you tap on the heading button, one thing you're going to notice right at the top here is the HD Jeep will populate here on the left hand side and that tells you you are in heading hold mode. So now wherever you adjust your heading to, the plane will try to attain that course. Now if you didn't want to use heading hold and you wanted to go on your GPS course, well the very next button down is your nav button and if you tap on that button, what's going to happen is the heading hold will go away and nav will appear. Now because we don't have anything put in our flight plan right now, 
the nav will not appear because we do not have a predetermined route. So the very next button down in the list here is the approach button. And this button is what you're gonna use when you're almost in line with the ILS. You're gonna arm that approach so that you can intercept your glide slope and the localizer. More on that in future episodes. So the very next button down is your vertical speed button. If we tap on that button, you will see your vertical speed index show up right here in the top right above the altitude. Now to increase that, you would go right here and we have two buttons. One says nose up and one says nose down. It's pretty self-explanatory. When you tap on the nose up button, one thing you're gonna notice right here is your feet per minute are gonna change. It will also change up here in the autopilot tab. So what the autopilot will do is try to maintain that climb or descent based on what you have programmed in here. So if you have 700 feet per minute, it will then try to pitch the plane up to continue with 700 feet per minute. Now, one thing you do have to watch is your speed right here. If your speed starts to drop too much, the plane is still going to tip upright and that will induce a stall. So the very next button down from the vertical speed is our optional way to get up to altitude. That is called the flight level change. And if we click on that button, one thing you're going to notice now is our vertical speed index just dropped off the face of the earth and we have a speed index right above our speed ticker tape. Now how this is gonna work is using the same two buttons, nose up and nose down, but what you're gonna be controlling now is an actual speed. So you might say, well, why would I use this over just using a vertical speed? Good question you ask. So let's go right down here and we're gonna skip ahead a little bit and come right back over to flight level change, but I'm gonna to explain to you why uh, you may wanna use that sometimes. So if you go right down here to your V-Refs, you're gonna see a VX and a VY climb speed. So if you have a very short distance to get up to altitude, you may not want to use a vertical speed and you may want the plane to adjust its vertical speed. So now what I did was I set our speed right here exactly to what our VY speed is. So now what's gonna happen is whatever altitude we put in our altitude bug, the plane will now pitch up or down to maintain this 74 knots. So I hope that explained flight level change for you a little bit and vertical speed for you a little bit and when you would wanna use one or the other. The next button down in our list is our flight director and that is this little magenta arrow here. If we go ahead and tick on that, well, if we go ahead and tick on that, we can turn on or off our flight director. Now what the flight director is gonna do, this is gonna help you try to maintain altitude and course based on what you have put in your GPS. For instance, if we have a vertical speed set of 2000 feet per minute, this magenta arc will be way up here to try to get you to pitch up. And the idea is that you're going to line up your yellow line or your yellow arrow to your magenta arrow and that will keep you on course. It also works for heading as well. So now if you see that I just turned my heading all the way due west, you'll notice that magenta arrow has now turned because what it wants us to do is bank the plane to go in that direction. So this is a really good, helpful hand in trying to keep you on course. So the very next button in our list here is the altitude button, and this is gonna be the altitude hold button. Now what that is gonna do is as you increase or decrease your altitude with the altitude knob here, the inner knob will go in hundreds, the outer knob will go in thousands. So now that we have our altitude set, while we are flying, we want the GPS now to maintain this altitude while we are in flight. To do that, all we need to do is come over here and hit the altitude button, and that will put us into altitude hold. Now there's a couple caveats to that, and we will go over those right now. If you were on the ground and you were getting ready to take off, you're not gonna put it in altitude hold mode because you're not flying yet and you're not at altitude yet to wanna to hold a specific altitude. So think about that. This is if you want to hold that altitude. Now we need to get to that altitude, so we're just gonna put our altitude in and put our vertical speed or our flight change in 
Now, once we get close to this altitude, what's going to happen is this is going to start flashing and automatically go into altitude hold. So you do not have to press this. And quite frankly, if you hit that altitude hold button, what it's going to do is turn the altitude hold off. Now, one of the other things is while you're in flight, the other thing you could do is if you tap on the center button here of your altitude, it will zero the altitude to what you are right now. For instance, if we are at 4,200 feet and I go ahead and tap this, it will go ahead and set my altitude bug to 4,200 feet. And then you can just quickly go ahead and tap on your altitude hold button. So the VNAV button and the VNAV functionality is used for either your departures for ascending or your arrivals for descending down into the airport. So this will be very helpful. And again, we will go through this in a future episode on exactly how to use the VNAV feature. The BC is a back course button. I don't even think this works in the sim right now. So we're just going to bypass that. So that pretty much takes care of all of our buttons and knobs here on the left hand side of our PFD. We're going to move over here to the right hand side of the PFD right now. And the very same thing at the top, you have your volume button for COM1 and COM2. If you want to switch between COM1 and COM2, it's the exact same thing as you would with the nav. You just tap on the center button and it works exactly as far as changing frequencies. Your inner button will change your smaller decimal numbers and the outer knob will change your larger decimal numbers. To go ahead and swap that over, you would just go ahead and hit the swap button and it does the exact same thing as the nav. So now below that, we have a course knob and a barrow knob. Well, the barrow knob is pretty self-explanatory. When you change that barrow knob, you're gonna see your barometric pressure change and your altitude ticker tape will move correspondingly. The inner knob, on the other hand, works your course function. Now, to get the course to even show up on here, you have to switch from GPS mode to nav mode. So after you go ahead and switch that from GPS over to nav mode, you're going to see this cute little course number show up here. Now, when you go ahead and flick on our knob, you're going to see that course button change. And this is going to be the same thing as your OBS knob in the Cessna 152. If you have not seen the VOR flight training, in the Cessna 152. I highly recommend you go ahead and check that out. I will put links down in the description for that as well. One more thing is when you are switching through GP or the uh, GPS and the VOR modes, you're gonna notice the VOR needles are different between a VOR1 and VOR2. Just like in the Cessna 152, our VOR needle one is a very thin line and the VOR needle two is a very thick line. All right, so the next knob here is our range knob. And you're gonna say, well, a range knob really doesn't do anything, but it does because we have not turned on our inset map on the PFD yet. We will go ahead and activate that in a second. So let's go ahead and move down to the direct to button. Now this direct to button is very similar to the direct button that is on our MFD screen. So we're gonna go over all of these on the MFD screen. The only other button here is a menu button, and quite frankly, if anybody can tell me what this means, I have yet to find any information about what this setup display even means under the menu. So we're not even going to talk about that, so let's move on. So right down at the bottom here, we have our FMS knob, and this is for if you wanted to program your flight right through this little menu right here. So if you want to change your flight plan, uh, or alter it in any way right from here. This is the knobs that you would use for that. All right, so let's go across the bottom of the G1000 and we're gonna start with the map and HSI button. Now, if you tick on this button, you've got a couple different options that are gonna pop up. Now, all these options are for your inset map. Now, you still do not have the inset map turned on and we have to do that first. So all we need to do is go right down here to layout and you're gonna either turn on the inset map, which is gonna populate right here on the left. Now, if you go ahead and maneuver that range knob, you're gonna see that map scroll in and out. The next menu that we have here is the HSI map, and if you tick on that, it's gonna take your inset map and put it right here under your compass rows. Again, if you adjust your range, it will, of course, adjust the range within that map that you have displayed. So now to go back, we're going to tick on the back button, and now we can use all of these different options down here. 
Now the detail option is something that I like to keep on number one or probably number two because this map is so small, you don't want it getting cluttered up with a bunch of stuff you don't need to see. Now a couple other features that you can use is you have a topographical map that will show you the topography of the landscape around you. Uh, and they're going to do that via different colors that are going to show up here on the screen. So if we zoom out, you can clearly see uh, which areas are high and which areas are low. And if we go ahead and turn the topo map off, we can also turn on a traffic map. And this will show you all the different traffic related in your area around you. The next button here is relative terrain. And then you also have your next rad feature to show you the weather. Now, whether these work or not, I can't really tell you. I think this is new, so time will tell. So now we're going to back out of that menu, and we have a couple more menus to go through. We have the PFD optional menu, and if we go through there, this is going to set up a bunch of different options for our PFD screen. The very first one is SVT. When you click on this button, you can turn the terrain either on or off on your GPS. I like to keep it on because it shows me a lot more information, and I find it much easier to land with this. The next button on the list here is the win button. If you click on that button, it's going to give you a couple different options. Again, they don't really tell you what the options are. You're just going to have to get up in the air and choose them and see which one you like the best. The next item on this list is our DME, and this is going to show you our distance remaining. Now, the DME is already pre-programmed in here, and I'm going to show you how to change that in just one second. The very next button on the list is our bearing one and bearing two. Now what that's going to do is pull a bearing up right here and right here, and you can set this for either Nav1, Nav2, or ADF. Also GPS. I never use the GPS feature because my GPS information is usually right up here at the top. Now as you see, when you have a nav frequency in here, what it's going to do is display the distance to that frequency, and we are 60.8 nautical miles away from our Nav1 frequency that we have right up here at the top. Now the next item on this list is the alt units. What that means is how they're going to measure your altimeter. So if you tick on that, you can either pick inches or HPA. Depending on where you are in the world, set that accordingly to your region. The very next button is your standard bearer button. And what this is going to do is go ahead and put you into your standard bearer setting to Niner, Niner 2. Now once you click on that button, it's going to put you back to your main menu. To get back there, you have to click to your PFD options, click on standard bearer again, and it will click to what you had previously set. Again, it's going to kick you back out here to your main screen. So to get back in, we're going to hit PFD options, and it will get us right back in. All right, so the next button on this list is our CDI button. We talked a little bit about that earlier, and if you click on that CDI, it's going to switch between a VOR1, a VOR2, and a GPS. Now, here's one of the things that I do not like about the HSI map being on, is when you're coming in for an ILS landing, and you're using VORs or localizers or things like that, the needle doesn't display the same information as it would without that map. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So right here, you can see that green arrow facing that way and the end of that green arrow here, but you don't really know which side you're off of that unless you look up here, you can kind of tell your way off to the right. But other than that, there's no other way to know. So if you go to your map HSI and you go to the layout and you turn the inset map on here, now look what you get in your compass rows. So for me, I prefer this one much more than having that inset in here. I would rather have the inset next to it because I get all the information on this compass rose that I need for my flight. So next we're going to talk about that DME information that was there. To change the information that is showed in that DME information, you're going to click right here on ADF DME. Now when you do that, you can either set to an ADF frequency and you're going to use these knobs right down here to do that. So once you get your frequency put in, all you got to do is hit the enter button and it will swap it right over for you. Now if you're not using an ADF and you want to use your NAV1 or NAV2, then here's where you can set either a NAV2 frequency or your NAV1 frequency. The next button on the list is our transponder. This is where you're going to set your squawk codes. 
So from left to right, we have transponder in standby. This is to turn the transponder on, and this is in altitude reporting mode. To enter your VFR code, you can either hit the VFR button, and it will automatically set your VFR code, and coincidentally, it's going to kick you back to the main screen as well. To get back, you can hit the transponder button. Now, if you have a squawk code that you're going to enter, all you need to do is go ahead and tap on the code button, and you can enter the code that was given. That'll then populate right here in your transponder and also tell you if you're in altitude reporting or if it's in on. The very next button on this list is your ident button and we don't really use that too much in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Even on Pilot Edge, we have our own ident button so we don't use that too much. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and hit the back button. The next item here, well, we've already talked about this which was our VREFs and our timer. And again, you can go down here and set each one of these individually, and they should be set up individually depending on your load. But most of the time, we fly with the default information in here, and it seems to work just fine. Get out of that, go ahead and tick that again, and the very next button that you'll have is your nearest button. If you tick on that nearest button, this is going to give you all the nearest airports that are in your area. Now, one of the cool things is if you're in an emergency situation, you can go ahead and hit the enter button on that and then hit direct to, and it will actually put you on a direct course right there. And all you have to do is scroll down, hit the activate button, and now you can see our course has changed. All right, everyone. So I think that pretty much takes care of the PFD. Let's swap over now to our MFD. Now, most of the features on the MFD screen, we're, we've already talked about, so we're not going to go over most of these. So all of the buttons down the left-hand side, we have talked about those already. The buttons across the bottom here, well, you can explore those. So you can turn on your traffic map here as well. You can turn on a topographical map as well, or the relative map. So the next feature on here is Nextrad, and that, of course, is going to give you your weather information. And you also have a legend here now that will tell you some of your topographical altitudes. We also have a couple different detail buttons here. Now with the PFD screen, I like to keep my detail very low. With the MFD screen, I like to keep my detail very high. The reason is because this is such a bigger screen and it can show and display much more information. All right, so we went over all of that and now the very last thing we're gonna go over is how to use this these functions right down here on the right. We've talked about all the buttons at the top. These are gonna control your comms and your barrow as well. This also has a course button over here. So if we go ahead and tick the menu button, you're gonna have a couple different menus show up and they are adding more as we go, as you can see here. So the first one that shows up here is map settings. And if you tick enter on that, it's gonna give you a couple settings that you can set up for your map. Now I always keep my orientation with north up and to get down there all you do is you move your outer knob and that will scroll up and down. You can then adjust whether you want to track up, heading up, or north up. When you pick the one you want you go ahead and hit the enter button and that will go ahead and yeah, set it. So we click on the weather. Uh, you Okay, so here we go. We can turn the next rad on or off over a certain range setting just like we could with the other one. Uh, the next is our traffic menu. If we click on that, we can then scroll down and turn our traffic either on or off. Looks like we can set the types of traffic that we're going to view as well. So that's pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff here, I must say. They're doing with the working title. So now in the aviation button, all right, this is pretty cool. So you can go down and turn on or off your NDBs, VORs, the airports, all, All right, so now that we have got out of that, we are going to talk about the flight plan in the G1000 now. All right, so to go with our flight plan, we're going to tap on the flight plan button, and it's going to bring you up your flight plan screen. Now, you're going to think that, oh, I'm just going to start entering there, but that's not where you want to go. You want to click on your outside knob and tick it down to the next line. Once you get down to that line, you'll take your inner knob now and rotate it. When you do, it's going to bring you up with another screen here so that you can enter your origin airport. Now the airport we are at today is 8S1, and there's a much easier way to enter that information than trying to use a scroll wheel and going through it this way. 
And you very well can, but there's an easier way. So if you go up here and tick on this little marker, and what that stands for is your keyboard. So now once that's highlighted, you can now use your keyboard to enter this information. So now once that information is entered, all you need to do is hit the enter button to accept it. And that will then tell the GPS where you are now. You can then pick a runway that you want to exit on. So we can go ahead and pick that, set that up as well, hit enter to accept, and it's now in the system. Now you want to scroll down to your destination and do the same thing. You can go ahead and scroll on that wheel and it'll bring up your waypoint information. Tap on this little keyboard icon and you can now input the destination that you want to go to. So we are going to put uh, KGPI, which is Glacier Park International. That is going to be our destination airport. We're going to go ahead and accept that. And most likely we're going to be using runway 02. We're going to go ahead and hit that and then enter and accept that in the route. Now there is one more waypoint that we're going to enter for this flight plan today. And we're going to scroll down to the end route. Go ahead and give that scroll knob a roll. Hit on our spacebar button if it can hit. Come on. And we are going to a VOR FCA. So we'll go ahead and enter that. Hit the accept button. And that is our flight plan in the computer now. I don't know why it's still showing that. Now, if we needed to enter an airway from that en route waypoint, all you need to do is go down here to the menu button and hit that. And then you can use your outer knob to scroll down to load airway, hit enter, and then you can load the airway information and you just enter the information as you go down. So we're not using any airways, so we're not even gonna bother with that. But there's a couple other options in here. You can collapse airway, hold at a certain waypoint, delete flight plan, or invert the flight plan. So if you wanted to go backwards, back to the original destination, you can just invert the flight plan. And you can also activate certain legs to your waypoints. So now that that is done, the other button that we have here is our procedure button. And if you hit the procedure button, you can select your approach, arrival, and departures. Just scroll down to whichever one that you want to set up. Once you do, go ahead and hit the enter button and it will list all the departure procedures. You can then scroll up and go down, use your enter button to then switch through the different procedures. As you can see, there is only one at this particular airport. Once you have done that, you can go ahead and hit the enter button and then scroll down to the load, hit the load and it will then enter that departure for you. Now we're not going to do that, so we're just going to go ahead and hit the procedure button again, and it will bring us back to the initial procedures. And the same thing goes if you want to do your approach, you would go ahead and select your approach. So uh, you can pick that approach, hit enter, and then you can go and select your transition. Once you do, you can go down and also set your minimums for that runway. The other cool thing that it's going to show you is your frequency for that runway. Now that frequency is a very important and you would need to enter that in your nav radio. So you can go right ahead, take that information, put it up in your nav radio and swap it right over and now you've got that primary frequency in your nav. Scroll down to the bottom, you're going to hit load. You won't hit activate. Once you load that, it will load that procedure in for you. Now if you go to your flight plan, you can see that that entire flight plan with that arrival, or I'm sorry, with the approach procedure is now in the flight plan menu. And if we scroll out a little bit, now for some reason it's not coming up here on the screen correctly and that might be a little bug here in the uh, GPS, so I'm not sure about that yet. But uh, as you can see, all of that information is in your flight plan. So that was pretty much a crash course of the G1000 NXI unit. Uh, as you can see, we ran into some hiccups here today uh, with the uh, new update. So hopefully things will change. But as for right now, I think everybody is pretty used to dealing with some bugs here and there. Anyway, I want to thank everybody for joining us today on episode two of our VFR Flight Basics training course. I hope you got a lot of information out of this. Again, if you have any questions, please post them down below and I will go ahead and get those answered as soon as possible. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe, tick that little bell, smash that thumbs up button. It really helps us out. And to all of our flight simmers out there, keep the blue side up. We'll see you on the next one.